Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can 3D scan objects yourself using the free software app called Meshroom and how you can reduce their poly count and bake their textures with the free software's instant meshes and blender. Let's get started. Before we can do anything, we have to 3D scan our object. First off, you should scan your objects during cloudy days or when they are in the shade. This is because when you scan an object that is directly lit from the sun, their shadows will be baked into the 3D scan. We do not want this because this can make our 3D scans look fake once they have been placed into a 3D scene. Next, you should scan your objects with a clean smooth motion and no motion blur. If your images have motion blur or if you take images with no transition from one image to the other image, the computer cannot calculate and construct a 3D mesh of the object. Therefore, it is best to slowly walk around your object that you want to scan in circles. Once you have taken images of every side of the object that you want to 3D scan, download and open the free software called Meshroom. Once Meshroom has opened, you literally only have to place your images in the software, save the file and press start. The software will now start calculating your 3D mesh and this may take a while. I took around 200 images of this air conditioning unit and the software took around 4 hours to finish calculating. When the green bar has reached the texturing node, you can double click on that node to view your 3D scan. The scan may take a while to come into view, that's okay. Now we open up a new Blender workspace. Blender is a 3D software that you can download and use for free. In a new workspace, we can delete everything and import the OBG file that Meshroom has made of our 3D scan. This file can be located in the folder where you saved the Meshroom file, under Meshroom cache and under texturing. Import this file into Blender and don't worry if this takes a while, that's completely normal. Once the mesh has been loaded into Blender, rotate and place it the right side up in the middle. Now you can look at your mesh and textures in 3D space by clicking the material view in the top right corner. Okay, let's go and clean up our mesh. Press the wireframe view in the top right corner and go into edit mode by pressing tab or clicking in the top left corner. Go into the top down view by pressing the blue Z in the top right corner. Now select only the object that you want to keep in your scan and once done inverse the selection by pressing Ctrl I and delete all of the vertex by pressing X. Repeat this process until only the object that you want to keep is left. Once finished, go into the sculpt mode in the top left corner, turn on the smooth brush and wipe your entire scan down so it looks a lot smoother. Once you have done that, Go back into object mode and export the file as an OBG. Now open the free software 
called instant meshes and import the obg file that we have just exported out of blender once the file has loaded into instant meshes set remesh as triangles set the target vertex count to somewhere between 8 or 10k press the solve buttons twice click export mesh and extract mesh and save your file make sure that you manually type .obg after the file name otherwise the software will give an error message Import the new 3D OBG file from Instant Meshes into Blender. Select that object and go into edit mode. Press U and Smart UV Project. Turn the island margin to .01 and go back to object mode. As you can see here, the mesh that we just imported from Instant Meshes has a lot less polygons than the original mesh and is therefore a lot better to use in our 3D worlds. Now we are going to bake the textures of the high poly version of our scan onto the low poly version. To do this, we first need to make sure that both objects are in the same place. So place them both on 0, 0, 0. Once done, Click the low poly mesh and give it a new material. Then expand the timeline window from the bottom and turn it into a shader editor. Add two new image textures and connect one to the base color node and the other one to the normal node with a normal map in between. For the base color image, press new image, name it something with diffuse in the name and multiply the width and height with 2 so that we get a 2k texture. Do the same for the normal image but remember to turn off alpha and turn on 32 bit float. Now make sure that your render engine is set to cycles. Select the low poly mesh and while holding shift select the high poly mesh version also. Now scroll down to the bake tab, set the bake type to diffuse, set the contributions to color and turn on selected to active and set the extrusion to 0.01. After that, click on the diffuse node we just made and click bake. Once the bake is done, go into the UV editing tab in the top of the screen and save the new diffuse image. Let's do the same for the normal node. So select it, set the bake type to normal and press bake. Once this bake is done, go to the UV editing tab and save that image also. We are now done and as you can see we have two objects that look almost identical. But one is very low poly and has big textures and the other is very high poly and has thousands of image files. I hope you guys like this tutorial and if you have any questions please feel free to ask them and I will do my best to answer every single one. 
बाय